I have cozied up. This is me cozying up. Cats are not cooperating today, so there's no cats in any of the videos. Hi guys! You can tell from the title and from the thumbnail and everything, everything. Um, that's not the book. Haha, <laughs> I still haven't read that one. I'm gonna be reviewing Three Dark Crowns by Kendir Blake. The book, that's the one I got from one of my book boxes last month. My book review is gonna be followed by my book rambles, which is like a book talk but less coherent. Uh, so if you haven't read those books, I will tell you when I'm switching from spoilery bit to the spoilery bit. So there's nothing to be afraid of and I'm sure you didn't... You weren't afraid before. Okay, let's move on. Um, this is the first book that's actually getting really close to being roasted. If not for the fact that I read this really fast, so it must have been interesting and it must have been fast moving, this would go into the oven, but it's saved and it doesn't get roasted. At some point it will happen because I read this book fairly quickly, but that being said, it took me quite a long time to get into it. If I was to judge the first third or so of this book, it would be like a two stars. But I did, at the end, gave this three and a half, I think, because it went like this, right? The beginning of the book was really crap. I'm not gonna lie, I really did not enjoy it. I was not following the plot, not that there was much plot going on. The first chapters are purely for the introduction of the characters, which is fine with me, except that all the side characters were so mixed up and not introduced in a proper way it was really hard to follow it this is told through each queen's perspective so it's focusing on introducing the main character so much that she sort of forgot that we're not familiar with the side ones because i feel like they were written about in the way as if we already knew them but we didn't so <laughs> that made it a little bit awkward plus not much happened at the beginning but i'm not a plot driven person i can read three, 30 pages about uh, two people just sitting and talking about sweet little nothings if i love the characters if the characters were great this was neither at the beginning <laughs> and then in the middle or like middle towards the end it got really good in the least expected way as in it got good because there were romantic feelings and romantic mini dramas going on and i actually enjoyed that which was not my initial thought about the book i didn't realize that so much is gonna be based on the romance i didn't think that this is gonna be a romance driven book but it sort of is so if you're looking for this fierce battle between three sisters because this is what the book is about so basically every queen always has triplets those triplets have different powers those triplets are also separated at around six years old i think and they are sent to different parts of the world to be taught and grown before their 16th birthday and when their 16th birthday comes they have this celebration and when that period is over within that next year the queen must kill each other until there's only one left and that one is gonna be the ruler. So each queen will have one ability, so it would be either elemental, which is, uh, you know, fire, air, earth, whatnot. Poisoner, which basically is a power, like, you're very good at poison, but then anyone can learn that. But the main thing is that you cannot get poisoned, so whatever you consume, whatever lethal things you eat and or get injected by, you're gonna survive. Which, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that just sounds like the crappiest gift ever. And then the third one is the naturalist, uh, control the nature around them and can also control animals, which is fairly cool. Although the history of the world recently only seen uh, queens that survived that were poisoners. In this generation, things are a bit different. But if you're picking this book up for like a awesome badass queen battle between three very powerful girls, you're not gonna get this in this book. So I think the reason why I didn't enjoy it as much as I maybe could have is because I had very different expectations from what I received. This was a very long introduction into the world because there's gonna be a second book and I don't know if there's gonna be more. I don't know if this is a series or a trilogy. If you know, let me know. I did get attached to the characters and I did get it did get interesting, but it just didn't get interesting fast enough for me to, to rate this higher. And because it was a bit misleading about what to expect, it was just not what I expected. Not to say that it was bad. I still enjoyed it and I'm gonna read the second one for sure. 
and I really did like the character development. I think some things that they did to change their personalities at the very end were really nice and I really liked those touches. And the plot was also quite okay after that initial bit of very slow introduction. We got to see some interesting fat bit fat? We got to see some interesting fast bits. Fa what the fuck? We got to see some interesting fast bits and um, travel a little bit and just explore. There's a big focus on um, friendship, which I love. There's also trainers with the girls that basically act like as a mother figure, although some of them are same age, so that's a bit weird. I like that trainee sort of thing going on in this in this book for all those queens. There's gonna be a second one, so if you're looking for a new series or trilogy or something to read, I can definitely recommend this. It's not a hard beat whatsoever. It's while it's a bit slow to, uh, to get into, as I mentioned, you do get like at least I did get into it eventually, and I did, and I sort of enjoy it. It wasn't a five star book for me at all, but it was easy to read and it was it was quick and tasty basically and i honestly think that it has a great potential for the second book if it's done right i like how the idea of three queens battling each other is actually based on bees because the way it works with bees is once the queen bee is dead the other ones fight to death and whichever one basically wins that one gets to rule i think that's nice i don't know I'm just i like that <laughs> so if you're looking for something like that there you go but anyway let me know if you want to pick this up let me know if you read it down in the comments below, but if you did read it, just, just keep it spoiler free for other people's sake. If you haven't read this book, then bye bye. The, the spoilers are to come. But if you haven't read this book and still want to, then do so. If you haven't read this book anything you might not want to, then you can stay. But spoilers are incoming, so bye bye to people who don't want to be spoiled. people who read this book or people who don't mind to be spoiled and want to hear me ramble I have my drink and I have my notes let's crack on them my first thought was that the poisonous people are absolutely assholes are they poisoning Catherine just so she would get immunity because she doesn't have her gifts but how does that freaking work just because you poison someone doesn't mean that they're not gonna get the rash next time unless they literally think that you can get immune from these things which is ridiculous and I thought that was so cruel they're supposed to be like a family. So the second chapter was about Arsenal, which is the nature girl, and she's she's being taught by Jules, who is the same age as she is, and she's so much better, and she has a freaking wildcat as her familiar. Familiars was something that I really really enjoyed because it really reminded me of Charmed, and that show was great, and that show was my childhood, and teenage years, and my adult childhood. <laughs> Charmed is life, guys. Jules is a badass, and then Arsenal, first of all, Arsenal sounds like arsonist and it's supposed to be an elemental one I'm sorry but that was just bullshit when she's holding those rosebuds and Jules does all the work and she's pretending and just the first chapter honestly made Arsenal sound like she's stupid I did not appreciate that just in general and then once I finished Arsenal's chapter so that was chapter 2 I said I bet those two are the wrong queens as in they don't have the powers because they have to have different powers that they are being trained to wield. So, two chapters in and the biggest plot twist that is revealed at the end, I guess. And I'm not even that good at guessing the plot twist. And I was happy that that happened, but I was a bit sad that I guessed it. I don't know, I don't like it when I guess things correctly. I like to speculate a lot, but I don't like to be right. And then at first I actually felt really bad for Catherine because all of the expectations of her to like shove in so much poisoned food also what the heck is wrong with people why do they like to eat poisoned food just to prove the point because it didn't seem like a very practical thing to do just because you're not gonna get the effects of being poisoned doesn't mean that you need to eat poison it's such a silly power but i really did feel sad for catherine because everyone around her are just poisoning her and being dicks and no wonder she just fell for the first guy she met all she's been doing was getting poisoned. I'd realized that I actually like Arsenal later in the book because she's funny. She looked like the only one who's trying to actually have fun while she can live. Sadly, nobody was actually expecting her to win and she did not expect to win, so she just went like, oh, whatever, I'll just live my life. I think the moment that I realized that I like Arsenal when she said that if she wins, she wants to have a great white shark as a centerpiece ceremony, 
I was like, that is such a legit wish. I like you. <laughs> At that point of the book, I still haven't read the chapter about Mirabella, and everybody was like, Mirabella is sweet, Mirabella is that, Mirabella is that. The poisoners hated her because she was an actual threat. The naturalists hate her because religious people, like the priests, were actually showing preference to one queen before the selection should begin. That rubbed everyone the wrong way, which I already knew that Mirabella is gonna be lovable. Because if the book is building up to like this united hatred against someone, that someone's gonna be good. And obviously she was sweet and she seems to be the only sister that actually somehow remembers her sisters and she dreams about them and she actually wants to uh, speak to them and protect them and that's why she always has those dreams and I thought I was so sweet she missed them and she doesn't want to kill them and she's the only one that actually does not want to kill them and that thinks that killing someone that you related to or unrelated to like just killing someone in general is wrong as if no one else is questioning the system why is no one else questioning the system although that religion is so messed up and at the end of that chapter she needs to sacrifice someone and i was like oh go figure they're gonna be nutheads i knew it and beware throughout the whole book they were nutheads and understandably because they understood that mirabella is not gonna you know after she ran away and everything they understood that she's not gonna kill them and they also realized that the other sisters don't seem to have gifts and then they just made up they just made up a rumor of why they should justify killing them themselves because it was like a white hand queen or something and then obviously Catherine pukes at her ceremony because she ate too much poison and then they punish her by poisoning her more because logic what the fuck is wrong with those people and although I really do like Arsenal, you know when she met with uh, Jules mother and they made like a bell with low magic and she she burned that I was like, are you stupid? I don't I don't even know of your world, but girl, even I know that you're not supposed to burn something that you bonded to a living person because that cannot end well. And she goes ahead and still burns it, even though I said her not to. And that's when I knew that she's stupid. I even thought that Jules might just drop dead because she burned her. But I swear to God, that must be why uh, Joseph slept with Mirabella, which was also a very convenient timing and very unbelievable. But the person that I probably disliked the most was Ro, but you're supposed to dislike her because she's the crazy religious person who burned that girl as sacrifice and she just hates life i think she just needs to get laid but she's not gonna because she's a horrible person and no one wants to sleep with her so now i'm at this point where i'm sort of enjoying reading about jules and joseph more than anything else because nothing else is actually happening with any other characters and i really enjoyed reading about them but when we got to the point where when joseph says to jules that he needs to like sail somewhere and that they're not gonna be part of for long to quote my notes i said something shit will happen something shit and smelly <laughs> and i was right and then when the chapter where marabella leaves because she realized how crazy the people around her are i was like you do you you go run because this is crazy and she does although she takes her friend's cloak that's like only priests get and i was like do you want her to be killed because she's gonna get killed she didn't get killed she did lose an arm though but you know potato potato and then after she ran obviously she saw the boy in the sea being smashed by waves and sort of dying and i was like okay so that's joseph and obviously that was joseph it was a little bit predictable and then they met each other and she saved him and she she decided she needs to lay naked next to him because that's how you warm a body which is fair enough and then they started making love why i like jules and joseph i like that jules was this unattractive badass and powerful and joseph is the guy from the family that the males are known for being womanizers and sleeping around and he was supposed to be different and yet here he is but because arsenal burned that doll he does feel horrible afterwards which is supposed is a little bit better but and then i also felt bad because i like mirabella and then i also thought because mirabella keeps dreaming about her sisters although she's not supposed to know about them she's not supposed to remember and they did mention that there's such a thing as the, the gifts of sight maybe she has that that's also worrying because people who have that go crazy so that might happen there's also a power of war but that i'm not particularly certain of what does it actually do do you does that just mean that you're a powerful warrior that you're prone to be badass in battle or is that is that or is that or is that a gift to manipulate people to start conflict i never it was never really explained and 
it's interesting. <laughs> There's a whole paragraph on me cursing the guys for not being able to keep it in their pants. <laughs> because I was so pissed that Joseph slept with Mirabella. And then something ridiculous happens and Arsenal thinks that her familiar is a bear. She goes after that bear because she had a dream and maybe that's how the bond worked. And they get into a fight because the bear is like crazy and also dead. For a second there I thought that Camden died. And Camden is the cat, well the cougar or whatever. Jules, is Jules familiar? And you know, I cannot handle animal cruelty in books. I can't and I almost cried. Right, and I was so mad at Arsenal and Madrigal with messing with this low magic. Oh god. And then it was fine, but, but they said that the kitten's shoulder is never gonna heal and it's not gonna be the same. And that made me so sad. And then Arsenal escapes with Joseph and that was nice. That was really nice of him to do because he met other queens and he only liked her. And he, he was the only person actually properly questioning the system because he knew that Arsenal does not have a chance and he just wanted her safe so he just shipped her. Yes! Someone's finally doing something about it! Oh, and because because he also knew of the, uh, of the religious fanatics plan to basically eliminate everyone so not only that she didn't have a fighting chance because she was weak but she honestly did not have a fighting chance because there was not supposed to be any fighting to begin with. So he did the only sensible thing and like basically took her and swam away. I think this was during the big hunt and Mirabella already knows that Jules is dating Joseph. At this point she still goes like hunting for him in the hunt and meets him and they make out. Now I don't know if I like you. You. And then I was really mad at Matthew because he's supposed to love Madrigal's sister so much. It was author had like a bone to pick with males because everyone except from Bill seemed to be absolute assholes that cannot keep it in their pants and it's really annoying me. I didn't like that in this book. And then maybe my favorite part of this book because it was so awesome was when all the potential mainland uh, males going and bowing in front of three queens and then, and then Billy comes up only bows to Arsenal. Yes! <laughs> and now the show up of the powers happen and like it's the most ridiculous thing that the poisoner only needs to like eat a lot of food in front of other people. Obviously the food is supposed to be like poisonous and, and the crazy religious lady did check on some, on some of her like servants or whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't be nice to serve you! She knew that the food was not actually poisonous but they just tricked people that it was poisonous and I was like that's the silliest power. I still really don't like that poison is a power. And it was sort of smart how Jules tamed the bear and pretended that that's Arsenal's bear. Although I knew something bad's gonna happen because it's just such a silly plan. When Mirabella was dancing, also why is she sexy dancing in front of everyone? Jules just sort of stares at Joseph and Joseph is just like drooling there in front of everyone looking at Mirabella. She loosens her grip on the bear and the bear dives for Mirabella. I hate this misunderstanding, it's like soap opera because Mirabella now thinks that the sister she saved and the sister that she really wanted to get along with and like just basically just be friends with and be a family with seems to have sent a bear to kill her but basically she feels betrayed but it's obviously not what happened and then Catherine was told by Peter to come to that, to come to that massive sacred hole in that they have nearby. People are pushed to die if something, anything goes wrong. And I, I really liked Peter. I thought he really loved Catherine. And that's the only part of the book that I still cannot really explain. Like, why did he push her there? Um, I'm not sure if he knew that she will survive. Obviously, we knew that she would survive. Um, and she was sort of badass when she came. It's completely changed because she was the most shy. Because obviously she's just been abused her whole life and now she was like, I'm gonna kill them, I'm gonna kill them all. And But she's obviously a naturalist thing, but she's still pursuing her poison talent because she's very good at mixing poison, which is my point exactly, that you don't actually need to be a poisoner to have poisonous abilities. I mean, you're gonna get poisoned, but you can learn to make poison. Also, Natalia poisoned dogs and I hate her. And they were familiars. She killed familiars. Screw you, Natalia! It's your familiar, can you not contain your familiar so it wouldn't eat the poison? I was just like, I don't, I don't. And Catherine sent uh, sweets through Billy, though he was not aware of it, they're poisoned. Jules eats some while speaking to Joseph about stuff. That's all like awkward now. And only then Arsenal sort of realizes that she ate them and she was fine. 
so she's a poisoner which is funny because they sort of hated the poisoners throughout all of the book and obviously whilst Jules is like in her deathbed Joseph is crying his eyes out being like I was so stupid for not loving her I'm never gonna let her go again why does a girl have to almost die for a guy to realize that I'm sorry but that is not romantic <laughs> so he's a jerk and the book got better at the end I was just expecting it to be a bit darker and to have more gruesome bits and to have more conflict and more power to, to the book. Even though I do appreciate the romance, I still want that in the book. I just want more of other things as well. But anyway, those were my rambles. Leave me a comment down below about what you thought about this book and your, just your general thoughts and let me know who's your favorite. I, I still don't know which one is my favorite. I really like Arsenal, but it's because of the animals. Let me know which power would you like to have. I would definitely want to have the elemental power. I think it's just much, much, much more powerful than the other ones and just, it just sounds very cool. Although I would love to have a familiar. So I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what other books you want me to review and talk about. I'll see you next time. Bye. Can you see it? Can you see it now? I swear to God, I'm gonna find myself so annoying when I edit this. As always, we have this gorgeous little... Oh, this.